Well, this is why you should always remove the battery from your retro computers and game consoles and whatnot. They will explode and you will have corrosion like this. And I really mean explode. It's like a gas inside that builds up and it just pops. It's not one of those slow leakers. It just explodes. So I can already say that this is probably a lost cause. We can learn something about this machine, but I don't think we will be able to fix it. I bought it for 20 bucks and the guy that had it got it as a gift from his dad and it was in working condition. Then when he tried to test it, um, I suppose he got the chess marks. Uh, you can look it up if you want. It's a pretty common problem with these old Macs. If you have corrosions, the screen just displays black and white squares. I don't get anything. So let's start by removing this bastard. Just look at that. It's like ammunition. Ammunition against the retro computers. And the whole purpose of this battery is to actually keep the time in the, um, the clock chip. You can see the little crystal there. Who cares about the time anyway? Time stands still on these old retro motherboards. And you can see the corrosion, the green goo. It's everywhere. And also around the capacitors, of course, we need to replace them as well. So apart from the battery, you also need to replace the electrolytic capacitors on these old machines. And that goes for any brand. They will leak and they will destroy the motherboard. And this was the last in line of the 68 thousand um, line of computers from Apple designed by Steve Jobs and his team back in 84 I think 83 84 and this was the cost reduced version uh, the last computer from that era they wanted to squeeze the last money from this product line my dad had one of these, it was a Mac SE, almost the same thing. I could use Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. I used it for school, for presentations. And um, I think he had his customer addresses and telephone numbers on the Mac and I used to work for him by putting in the telephone number and the, and the address to all these uh, persons and then he print them out and post invitations to his restaurants and nightclubs and I got to earn a little bit of money doing this the screen is black and white it's very small but somehow it was okay back then this is my ultrasonic cleaning machine it's great it's not a big one, it's just a small one. I use it for everything now. It does a great job cleaning all that junk off the motherboard. You can see the small bubbles there. It sounds a bit, so my wife is not so fond of it. It's a nice design around the Motorola CPU. And you can see that Apple does not do all the chips. They really like to put the Apple logo on them, but if you look, it's just one of those off the shelf chips. And this one is from 1990 with the SCSI interface and RAM expansion. Ah, 
let's hope it cleans up good. And that's the floppy interface. Look at that chip, we have to remove that and replace it. That's just a TTL chip, 74LS174. I have a bunch of those. And this is the analog board. It holds the driver for the CRT. It's also the power supply for the motherboard. And by the way, I heard that you just need a 5 volt rail working to get the computer booting because that's all that um, the minimal configuration of the motherboard needs. If you don't use the expansions, you can just at least try to get it to boot with the 5 volt rail. And the corrosion is pretty bad here on the chassis. We need to remove everything and try to get that the most of that things off and um, I guess I just I'm gonna spray paint it who cares it's horrible the battery battery damage but the analog board looks okay and this is where you can die so be very careful I'm not gonna show you how to uh, discharge the CRT because if you do that wrong and something happened to you I'm um, I don't want to be responsible. So just read up on it. You have a flyback transformer. And all these things to be scared of. So the motherboard cleaned up pretty good. I used uh, vinegar and a toothbrush. Got some scratches here. And that connector is not gonna work, but it doesn't matter, it's not in use. Changed all the capacitors. And um, this chip fell off. And I also lost one of its legs, so I'm gonna replace that, of course. Would be fun if we got some kind of life from this motherboard. If not, I can just buy another one on eBay. They're not so expensive. Since the rest of the computer seem to be okay, that could be a solution to our problem because this is not gonna boot. It has too much corrosion and um, I don't really want to be here a couple of hours just trying to find the problem. This is a CRT. Looks okay. Look how small it is. This black and white CRT. That's a great contrast. And if you're working with text, it's really good. This is the floppy. It's one of those mechanical one that shoots out the disc by itself. This is a Sony MP F7 something. They had some problems that the mechanical parts got stuck in it, but it's cool to have a floppy that pops out the disc by itself when you click Mata ut in Swedish, it just pops out. A quantum disk with the EEPROM from Apple 1990. I think it's a 40 megabyte quantum SCSI disk with a retail price, probably somewhere around four or $500 back then. State of the art. Sounds like someone is grinding metal against metal when you use these old discs. But that's normal. So 
So let's try to assemble this machine again. Since you didn't see me disassemble it, this will be your way to um, kind of follow what I do. Just put it in reverse and you have disassemble and assemble in one. And the fan here that cools this beast of computer. And you can see the Swedish winter in the back there through my window. Rain, storm. Hopefully the cold weather will come soon and Sweden will become a winterland. I love the snow. And the analog board looks great actually. So definitely worth 20 bucks. fan goes to the analog board I don't know if it's a fan controller on there. I hope so. And the motherboard just slides like this. The chassis looks pretty good now. It's gonna last a couple of years more. And um, that's more or less it. And this is the front of the classic. And of course, this is where I mount the CRT. And I know I should put something soft underneath the CRT. Otherwise, it's bound to explode in my hand and I will be blind. But you know, that never happened. And I've disassembled a lot of CRTs. Especially now when I put the screw in, there will be an additional pressure on the front of the CRT. And that's very stupid. But nothing happens. It's not that easy to break a CRT if you have ever try. You try to throw a stone on it. From the front, I mean. From the back, it's very easy. The tube there on the top of it, it's very sensitive. And that's where almost all the breakage is done. On the front is very tough. Pretty neat machine, pretty neat design. It's a nice machine. It's a nice design from 1984, squeezed into this box. And here you can see the devil, the horrible battery. And it's actually displaying the checkerboard, the chess board again, meaning that something's wrong somewhere on the motherboard, but at least this comes from the motherboard. So there is hope and life. And um, I'm going to use that motherboard as a spare. And that's it. I see you again really soon with another video.